optimal. We're gonna talk about the library in Lightroom and what's the difference between a folder and a collection, a smart collection, a catalog, all these things. Well, if you've been watching these videos, and I'll put the playlist in the video description, but if you've watched my other videos, you know that we've already made a catalog. Let's actually go. I went back to this catalog rather than my big catalog, just so we could have kind of a naked catalog as a reference. So you know what to expect if you've just made a catalog and imported the images. Here's these images we imported in the catalog we made, and we're still in the library module right here. Now, let's go over to these side panels, which by the way, you can show and hide the side panels with the tab key. And let's look here. We have our catalog and all the photographs in the catalog are 46. Now what this means is that it, if we had different folders, different projects, different locations, that's telling us everything that's in this catalog, which has all the edits and everything for all those photos. If you delete the catalog, as I've said before, you wouldn't lose the photos, but you would lose all the edits and changes you'd make because those are part of the catalog. Always make sure you have backups of everything. Now, if you go here, we have all synced photos. Now, we haven't talked about syncing yet, but this would be if you were syncing photos to Lightroom Cloud, Lightroom Mobile. We'll cover that in a different video. Quick collection, this is where, it's just another way to organize photos. If you press the B key, it's another way to kind of flag a photo. So we talked about in the rating and sorting video, how you can do stars, you can do colors, right? You can do a flag, but if you press the B key, it's gonna do a quick collection. And usually this is there just to quickly sort some photos out and then you can go and sort by the quick collection and see only those photos. Now, anywhere you click on this panel here, on the navigator on the side, you're going to be able to see whatever's inside any of those groups and or folders. So catalog is pretty basic. Then you go down to folders. Folders, and this is important. Folders represent where the files are actually on your disk. So that's why when you look in folders, you're actually going to see folders and you can search and filter them if you have a lot, you can expand. You can see that this is my local disk C. When you see me working in my large catalog in other videos, you're gonna see that there's different disks and different subfolders within those disks. So I can select any of those. I could select any folder. I could expand or, or, sub, or uh, expand or collapse folders within that. There's a lot of ways that I could do this. But the bottom line is a folder represents a real location on a disk somewhere so that you know where that's at. And if you actually right click on these folders, you can see information about it. So I could right click and say, rename this, show the parent folder. I could show it Explorer or on Mac, it would be show in Finder and look at where it's at on the disk to move it or make a copy or something like that. Now bear in mind a folder is what Lightroom is actually referencing for your files. So if a folder disappears from a drive, if a drive is gonna disconnect, something like that, you're gonna still see the previews because you have a catalog. It's one of the benefits of a catalog. You'll see the previews, but because your original files are disconnected, it's gonna show over here as disconnected. There's actually cases where in emergencies, I have recovered images from the previews in the Lightroom catalog when the original files are lost. This shouldn't happen if you're organized and you're having good backups, but things happen sometimes. There's actually another video about recovering files from previews right here on my channel, and I'll link to that in the description as well. So folders are real locations on your computer. You can add folders and use it just like importing. You can remove folders with the minus key and as you can see, they'll be removed from the catalog, but you're not actually deleting the folder from your disk. Let's clarify this though. If you hit delete in the catalog, you can see that there's an option to remove from Lightroom or to remove it from the disk. And if you select this, you actually are deleting the file as in sending it to the trash and it will be gone. That's just something to remember when you're using the delete key. You can delete and select only remove from catalog and leave it on the disk, just like if you were to hit minus and remove a folder from the folder section, it wouldn't take it off the disk, it would just take it out of the catalog. But bear in mind, if you did that, any edits that you had on 
those images from that folder would then be removed from the catalog. Next, we have collections. Collections are very useful, and they're usually what people get confused with folders, but now that you know what folders are, you don't have to be confused. Collections are part of the catalog itself. So whether you make a smart collection, which can be edited with different parameters or keywords, we'll talk about smart collections in a different video, or whether you just make an individual collection, you can make a collection set and then put collections inside it. So you could call this set and make a collection. I might make a collection that was called wedding, right? And then inside that, you can make a collection that's called reception. So you can make as many collections as you want and put photos in them. Now, one thing, let's go back to our test files folder here, and here's the actual photos. Now we can drag photos to these collections and organize them that way. Let's say we wanted to filter to only green stars and we're gonna take these green starred images and now I'm going to hit Control A or Command A to select all the images that are on my screen. I'm gonna go back down here to create collection and it's gonna give me an option and I'm gonna call this faves, let's say. And I'm gonna put it inside the collection set set or I could uncheck that and it would become its own parent collection. I can also do this. I've selected all the photos. I can say include selected photos. I could even tell it to make new virtual copies, but virtual copies is something we'll talk about in another video, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. But I'm just gonna create the collection and you can see that it now loads the collection we just make made with those photos in it. So I can either manually drag photos into a collection or I can create collections and, the, and have it take the selected photos and automatically put them into that collection. Or I can make smart collections and I can do that and make parameters to import those. But I'll show you that in the next video. I hope you're enjoying these. If you are, hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and we will see you on the next one.